There are a lot of conspiracy theories out there, especially on the topic of cancer. It just seems that everyone has their own way to magically cure cancer with baking soda or with herbs or something. I mean, really. Just type in cancer cure on YouTube and instantly you'll find results of people claiming they know how to cure cancer using alternative methods. Today we're going to be doing a video reply to this guy called Alvin Jackson. I got a request to tackle this guy on his vaccination video, but seeing that one, I already did plenty of videos on vaccination, and two, my friend Slightly Immune already tackled that video, I'm going to take a look at Alvin's video on cancer instead. Buckle your seatbelts guys, it's going to be a rough ride. I'm going to start, start you off with the general definition and behavior of cancer. This is the way it works. Take a look at this diagram that I've put together here for you so you can take a close look at it. Now, what happens is in the middle, you'll see you have a main cancer cluster. I don't know where you got main cancer cluster, but that's not a real terminology. The only thing that's close to that is just cancer cluster, but that has a completely different definition than how you're using it right now. For the sake of the argument, I'm willing to use MCC, but don't do this shit in the future, Alvin. That main cancer cluster is the origination or where the cancer started. Eventually cells are going to break off that main cancer cluster and they're going to go to other parts of your body. You're talking about the primary tumor here. Is that what you mean by MCC? Because it sure seems like it. Alright, those cancers that go to other parts of your body and those cells that lodge in other parts of your body, whether it be your lungs, your brain, your pancreas, your spleen, wherever, they're called satellites. And those satellite cells are actually going to remain lodged. Now, nope, that's not what a satellite is. A satellite involves cancer cells that has spread to a very close by area. If it's spread to other organs, by definition, it isn't a satellite anymore. Here's the interesting part. Those signals actually communicate to each other that they are all right. Signaling of cancer cells is a tricky topic that we haven't fully grasped in medicine, but there are plenty of different types of communication. For example, breast cancer signaling using cytokines and growth factors can ultimately determine the destination of metastasis, which explains why breast cancer tends to spread to the bones and lungs. Other communication methods, such as when the lesions and other organs are already formed, signaling may help each other grow and organize through both protein and RNA-based hormones, but it's not a check to tell the primary tumor that they're quote unquote all right. That's too much of a simplification. So in many cases, if you were to leave the cancer alone and the communication kept existing between the main cancer cluster and the satellites, you wouldn't have any problems or flare-ups with your cancer. <laughs> Until it kills you, that is. When the doctor tells you that they're going to excise the cancer, they're going to cut it out. They're, they're going to say, we got all of it. Good job. And then they know, they know, they're smart people. They know that the satellites are still there. So what's going to happen is they're going to perform chemotherapy and radiation in an attempt to kill the satellites. Now, if they were to kill every single satellite in your body by going to the extreme with the chemo and the radiation, what would happen? You be dead. Except for when you don't die because the chemo and radiation treated you. And if you did just so happen to live, you'd be so weak and you would have zero immune system. Basically, rendering you as an AIDS patient. Of course, chemotherapy is going to toast your immune system and will make you feel not so good. But who gets out of any cancer treatment feeling energetic and cheerful? Chemotherapy is a general term that includes a variety of cancer drugs, which usually target rapidly dividing cells, exactly what cancer does. So of course, your own cells that rapidly divide will also be targeted, thus the side effects. Radiation is a different story, which we might not get to in this video. So when they cut out the cancer, you know what happens? When the signals, those satellites, no longer receive their signals from the main cancer cluster, they start to multiply. These lesions in other areas will multiply with or without the primary tumor. In fact, 10% of cases has metastasized without the primary tumor even being present. We refer to these non-existent primary tumors as unknown primary tumors. So tell me, Alvin, what's the story for these cases? And when they multiply, that is what we call in the medical field a metastasis. No, that's not what metastasis is. Metastasis is the spread of cancer cells from one part of the body to the next without being connected to the main source. Or in other words, without the primary tumor just growing into new locations. Man, this is like the one word everybody knows the definition of when it comes to cancer. Get your shit right. It means your cancer has been gone, be, gone beyond control and it has, uh, it's rendered as a death sentence, all right? Usually this is stage four cancer and the person has no chance, zero chance of survival. That's not true. Besides your incorrect definition, metastasis is difficult to deal with, sure, but it's not impossible. The numbers are different depending on what type of cancer we're dealing with, but let's look at the deadliest cancer, lung cancer. 
After metastasis, the survival rate is down to 4%, but that's lung cancer. Breast cancer, the most common form of cancer for women, has over 20% survival chance after metastasis, and there are other cancers that are higher and lower, but the point is the survival chance isn't zero. Your cancer metastasizing is more correlated with the time in which you find your cancer, not some silly shit like cutting out the main cancer fucking control center. Truth be told, chemotherapies and radiation only have over a 5 year period a 2% success rate. Actually, no, it's not 2%. It's different depending on what kind of cancer we're talking about, but if I were to guess, it'd be about 50 to 60% overall. But I know where you got your 2% from. This misinformation started from a paper titled The Contribution of Cytotoxic Chemotherapy to 5-Year Survival in Adult Malignancies. Now, I'm not going to read you the entire paper. Instead, I'll just tell you why this paper doesn't actually say that the chemotherapy success rate is 2%. See, the paper only measures how chemotherapy affects cancers with 5-year survival rates, whether it could be the sole contributor to extending this 5-year period or not. So this 2-3% is the percentage of patients who survived because of the addition of chemotherapy. It doesn't mean the other 97% died. Let me repeat that one more time. It's the percentage of people who survived and that their health was mapped out that the sole reason they survived was due to the addition of chemotherapy. So, uh, you kinda got it wrong this time, buddy. Maybe check the sources of your claims before actually claiming them. You know what else has a 2% success rate? A sugar pill. What? A sugar pill? How could you possibly know the percent success rate of a placebo? In order to test anything, we need a placebo to be the control group. So what, the experimental group will also be a placebo? What the fuck? Is that is that comforting to anybody to, who has cancer that you could take, stay at home, take a sugar pill, and get the same effects as your chemotherapy, only you'd still have an immune system, you'd still be alive for a longer period of time. Well, fuck you, because it's not 2%. And if you never go to the medical route of getting chemo, having the cancer cut out, having radiation, did you know that you have a, a 90 to 100% chance of getting rid of your cancer if you just did natural means? <laughs> now we're getting to the juicy part. If you just did a juice of carrots and green vegetables every day, did you know your cancer could be gone in as little as three months? No, 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 please don't do that. That won't cure your cancer. I don't understand. Why do people even think that this kind of shit works? Because it doesn't. You'd think that after a few people lost their lives from trying alternative medicine, people like Alvin here would be like, eh, no, yeah, let's not do that. Ridiculous. Leave the medicine to the real doctors. And this is from people that I have talked to personally in real life. These are not statistics off the internet. These are not things that I just made up out of my head. These are real people who have done this stuff and the statistics are there to show that. Well then, if the statistics back you up, why don't you share them with us? I'm not going to show you many or any statistics because most people believe that uh, statistics mean something. I, I don't believe they do. That's awfully hypocritical considering that just now you were hammering the 2% chemo survival rate. I believe the real accounts of people who are going through a tragedy and have come out on the other side and I want to know what they did, okay? That's what you should be doing. Right, because personal anecdotes are far more powerful than scientific research, right? You know those scientists who work tirelessly on potential cancer drugs by testing them over and over again? Yeah, they're just wasting their time. Just talk to some random guy who survived cancer instead. Another thing about cancer is that it it can be cured in a number of ways. There is not one cure. Correct, because cancer isn't just one disease. There are over a hundred different types of cancer out there, and we can almost treat them like different diseases altogether. So no, there isn't just going to be one cure for cancer. Every time you see on the news and in the media, you see the cure for cancer. <laughs> the cure for cancer. It is quite a good clickbait title though. Billion dollar industries are built on you having cancer. So do you ever think that they would ever have a pill that would cure cancer? The answer to that is no, and at this point I'm sure everyone knows the true reason behind that. Not because doctors and researchers are making billions of dollars and don't want to release a cure. Nope. You know, this is a multi-billion dollar a year industry, one of the largest in the world, one of the biggest complexes that will ever exist on the, in the face of mankind, and you think they're just going to throw away $500 billion. I'm going to skip this part because he has gone full-blown conspiracy theory right now, and this video is 20 whole fucking minutes long. I just want to get to as many new and interesting points as possible. It's a simple cure. Remember that grape juice I was just talking about? 
that would do it. That's why people have you juicing with fruits and vegetables. Because vegetables will give you the nutrients, the fruits will give you the natural sugar. What the fuck does that even mean? Nutrients and natural sugars? Could you possibly be less specific? And no, that alone cannot cure your fucking cancer. Look, let me show you what an actual cancer drug looks like. Many drugs we have target specific oncogenes that the cell has in order to stop the unlimited growth. Herceptin is an antibody that targets the HER2 EGF receptor and inhibits it. HER2, when overactive, will cause an amplification of a signal cascade which ultimately activate many proteins that promote cell growth and division, such as MYC and mTOR. In order to develop this drug, scientists need to do countless experiments to determine the tyrosine kinase pathway. Now tell me, what specifically in fruits and vegetables are you talking about? Do they affect these pathways that we've learned about cancer? Hmm? And if you guys didn't know, we all produce approximately 10,000 cancer cells per day. I don't know the actual number of cancer cells that gets destroyed by the immune system per day, but it most certainly isn't 10,000. A cancer cell needs at least a few essential mutations to become cancerous, specifically driver mutations, which are mutations that give the cell a selective growth advantage. This does not happen that often as to give you 10,000 cancer cells per day. That's just outright ridiculous. And those cancer cells are killed every day by our liver cells. You mean our immune cells. If you watch this video and you continue to do the same thing, it's your fault. Don't ever let the medical profession or a doctor dictate what you do with your life, how to live your life. Statistically, one in every two men get cancer. So Alvin, if you ever get cancer, can you hold up to your own standards? Can you ignore everything your doctor tells you and drink carrot juice instead? I know there are some of you out there right now. If I go look in your uh, bathroom, if I go look in your kitchen, you have 10, 20, 30 bottles of medication, one meant to supplicate the next and making you feel better. That's quite a claim you got there. Feel free to check my bathroom. I think the only medication I have there is a bottle of ibuprofen. Sadly, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work on stick figures. Are you feeling better? Or do you feel tired all the time? Are your joints falling apart? Because any time that you put these medications into your body, half of them will destroy the cartilage in your body. I don't even know where you got that from, and I'm not gonna ask. The hardest thing to do is to go into your doctor and say, Doctor, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, you better tell those fucking doctors that they're wrong. Yeah, four years of med school? Psh, useless. I know better than you because Alvin Jackson on the internet told me so. Uh, okay, well, that's gonna be the end of this video. Alvin's video is 20 minutes long, but at the end he starts ranting about all the different types of natural treatments you can do, like baking soda or coffee. So yeah, you don't need me to tell you that all those are bullshit, but in case you're curious, the original video is linked down below. Before I go, I do want to give one advice when it comes to cancer. The deadliest cancer is lung cancer, and it's the second most common cancer for both men and women, which I find to be quite interesting because lung cancer is mostly the result of what we do to ourselves. That's right, I'm talking about smoking. If you're not a smoker, please don't start. Tobacco is basically just a pack full of carcinogens. So anyway guys, that's my time. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.